I have logged into the RV controller um, through RV UI. And this is a single dashboard that you see across your entire environment, across multiple clouds. And now what I see here is a list of applications. In this case, I have 12 applications or 12 VIPs in the load balancing parlance, uh, what we call them virtual services. These virtual services uh, are color coded based on the health score. So for example, uh, in this case, this particular application, or this particular virtual service uh, has a performance score of 88, which says the performance, the, 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 the latency is reasonable, the traffic throughput is uh, doing fine. And on a, on, on a scale of 100, its performance is it's pretty good at 88. But in addition to doing application health, um, uh, measuring it in terms of its performance, we also measure the risk that might be associated with the application's performance in future. So it's not just a binary up and down about whether my app is up or down. It actually talks about um, how the resource utilization is on my application. If I'm getting saturated either on my load balancer resources or on my application pool members resources, we adjust the score appropriately. In this case, we have a resource penalty of 10 or negative 10. Our AVI controller is also a big data analytics engine. So as we saw in the slides, we collect a ton of metrics and logs from the service engines, from the application traffic, and then we correlate that with the rest of the infrastructure. And if we see any anomaly in the behavior, such as a spike in a latency or a drop in throughput, we call out as an anomaly penalty. And a security is, is an important feature of our product, not just from SSL offload point of view, but also in terms of DDoS mitigation, in terms of uh, calling out any security misconfiguration, uh, certificate expiry, or um, weak cipher that you might have create, uh, configured for your SSL, we call that out in form of a security penalty. And we'll address some of these as we uh, go in the next few minutes. But the key, key takeaway on this is that we give you a much more holistic view on your application's health beyond just whether my app is up or, or down. Now let me dig deeper into one of these applications, one of these virtual services, and see what's going on. So for a given application, in addition to the health score that we uh, just discussed, we provide a, a ton of metrics and visibility into what its performance is. So for example, in this case, what I'm showing you is that for this applications, over the last six hours, uh, the end-to-end -end latency from my client to the load balancer, which is in the data center. So this is typically a van latency. It's about 100 milliseconds. On an average, the, the, the latency between the load balancer and the backend pool members is just about a millisecond and a half. So my local data center net network is just doing fine. The application is taking 124, 125 milliseconds to process the request. So this is not a network latency. This is how long the application stack is taking to process the request and start sending out the response. And finally, it's taking just under a millisecond for the data to go back with the overall RTT as experienced by the end user of 226 milliseconds. Now this dashboard is unique to the industry to what Abhi does. There is no agent running anywhere in, 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 on the servers. There is no monitoring fabric or a span port anywhere. This is an inline analytic solution that gives you the end-to-end -end latency breakdown. And many of our customers call it a mean time to innocence tool. And you, you can see why, right? Because today, if there is a problem in an application performance, uh, you, there is a finger pointing that goes on. Is it a network issue? Is it a, is, is an application issue or a server issue? And then you, you don't know where to start. Well, this dashboard gives you the top line um, starting point to say, first of all, if there is a problem, and if so, where it might be. So in addition to doing this, 10,000 foot view of my application performance, I can dig down into the specific um, individual transactions, right? Um, so for example, um, we have a log screen in which we collect, um, the service engines collect uh, logs of the HTTP and TCP uh, transactions and other metrics as the traffic flows through our service engines. By default, we propagate only significant logs up to the AVI controller. And the significant logs are the ones that have errors in them or if we see that there is some kind of abnormal behavior. So you see there are a bunch of 404s that we have highlighted here. If you do want to see all uh, logs and all the transactions, 
um, we just click one button and now RV controller, the centralized RV controller has pulled all the logs from all the service engines and they're displaying at one location. And you can now run a ton of analytics on top of these logs, uh, as I see on the right hand side. First of all, let's open up one of the uh, specific uh, um, log and see what's going on. So for example, this particular transaction, a given transaction, um, came in from this particular IP address and port, which is which is a client in US, somebody running a Windows 7 machine uh, with a Firefox browser running SSL uh, TLS version 1.1 with an RSS certificate. So detailed information about your client. It took 19 milliseconds to a uh, round trip from that client uh, to the load balancer. So uh, that sounds reasonable. It was uh, handled by this particular VIP and port. It's an SSL uh, VIP, as you can see. And this is the details of the backend connection between the load balancer and the backend pool member. Uh, it also has other timestamps information and the length information. Uh, we, it also tells you that it took one millisecond on the local network. Does is doing fine, no problem. And then finally, the URI that the, the client was looking for was a particular PNG file. And application was rapid, less than a millisecond, so almost zero milliseconds to, uh, to process the request, and data went back in a millisecond with the RTT of 21 milliseconds total. This level of information is hard to find today anywhere in the industry, and this is for every transaction we collect this level of information. Now, you can do, as I said earlier, you can do further analytics and say, well, I see a bunch of 404s. What if I were to know what's going on on this, um, uh, what's generating this 404? Well, I just clicked on um, uh, one place which says 404 on it, and my Google-like search engine got populated with a query which says, show me only those transactions which have a 404 response code. Now I can go back and see, well, which are the URIs which are generating uh, these 404 errors? And as you can see, other than a few uh, uh, bogus URLs, there are two primary PNG files that are missing. And let's say I'm interested in finding out where this particular file is missing, which backend server, all I have to do is, uh, while I have this query on, I click on server IP address, the pool member IP address, and it tells me after, out of the two or three pool members that I'm load balancing, I have this file missing on exactly one server. So not only I can identify if there is a problem, in this case it's a 404, I can actually root cause it to say that it is because of a specific a file on a specific backend pool member and quickly uh, resolve the problem by, um, by copying that file from, from another server. So this level of um, analytics this, uh, that allows for rapid troubleshooting is uh, unique to what Avi does. Now, if I can, I can, I, we can do other analytics, um, such as we can identify what are the what are the end-to-end -end latency uh, uh, that the other clients are experiencing. I see there are a bunch of them which are high latencies. We can figure out these high latencies are coming from a specific browser or a specific device or a specific location. In this case, looks like they're all coming from India. So I can then go back and say what's going on in terms of the end-to-end -end latency. Um, and I can clearly see that the WAN RTD is pretty high. So I can go back to my the data center network team and say, can you look at the WAN connection from our India office?